And okay, we had a blank op portmanteau. So if you're playing API bingo or anything cool bingo, we wouldn't be a hip conference without Kubernetes. So next, Daria is up to close out this portion of the, the API design track with how to access all relevant API information on, you got it, Kubernetes. Go ahead, Daria, take it away. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and thanks a lot for having me. It's great to uh, see the community again and to share our story. So uh, let me quickly explain you where we come from and how it uh, happened that we actually uh, developed a Kubernetes browser for uh, to serve our needs. Um, Kealogix is a Swiss company uh, which operates internationally. It is uh, 25 years old and in the uh, course of the time it has grown and acquiring uh, other companies uh, around the world, uh, which of course also had their products and uh, their customers. And uh, at some point, uh, we have faced a situation that our portfolio has grown uh, to a certain extent. And uh, while serving the banks, uh, which uh, mostly host their solutions on premise, so we faced a situation that we had not only just few products, but actually considering the customization of the customers, we actually had a really broad portfolio, which we had to support all based on the monolithic architecture. So uh, at some point, we decided to move to one product. Uh, like it says, one product with uh, unlimited possibilities, which already calls uh, after uh, microservices. So let me quickly tell you where we have started. Uh, the monolithic application, which we had as a product, uh, actually, it was quite a complex one. If you are uh, in the similar situation, you would know that there's a certain lack of flexibility. There's not always easy to uh, develop further solutions or integrate. Of course, it's doable, but it comes with uh, certain complexity in terms of you always uh, touching uh, the spaghetti code and, and you need to, uh, to make sure that everything works uh, in general and the whole product works. Uh, at the same time, uh, like I said, there's a lot of customization uh, which are really difficult to support at some point. And uh, you're facing challenges like older technology, um, maybe vanishing, know-how, and of course the costs. So in terms of the costs, you can imagine that uh, not only our customers, I think every customer looks to uh, optimize the costs. And uh, it, it's really difficult to, uh, to face the situation for us as a company and for our customers when something that we would uh, like to have developed in, uh, in, in two days uh, takes a week or so. Uh, just because it's a really complex uh, setup. So to improve it, we have decided to move to uh, microservice architecture and obviously use Kubernetes. And with this move, also something changed in terms of the APIs, obviously. So all of the modules of the microservices now also come with their own APIs, which they own. Um, Obviously, we uh, we see a lot of improvements made with uh, with Kubernetes, with uh, microservices in general. It's uh, really more flexible, so it's more independent. You can develop your modules or APIs independently of other modules. Uh, you can uh, easily add new features. Customers can add new features. Uh, you can uh, easily integrate partners. So that's all, that's all great and much better. Uh, but there's another uh side of complexity which came in uh which uh, uh just imagine you had like one box right that was complex to maintain and deal with so now we have uh, a lot of uh, small boxes which are easy to handle but that's uh, just returns to complexity there's so many and you somehow need to have this transparency and you need to uh, make sure that you capture all the information and you actually know what's happening so um, going uh, going to to the picture to show you how it looks uh, today. So just imagine you have a certain uh, delivery bundle with the release bundle. Uh, both have already a different version, and uh, modules have different versions, and they might have known or several APIs, and also they have different versions. Um, uh, yeah, previously, we have also faced the situation that our customers might have asked us, so what is uh, the, actually the 
uh, the version of certain module or certain small, certain product or certain partner integration on this product, and uh, that was not always easy to find out. So you you had to uh, to find someone in the company who actually has access to this information. You had to retrieve this information, and the whole process was kind of long. Um, it was not that easy to uh, to uh, for for everybody, for, let's say, for product manager or for project manager to go uh, and retrieve this information. Uh, and and now, I mean, we have uh, several modules. We have a lot of APIs. We have a lot of versions. So uh, of course, the, for for every customer, there are different deployments because every customer gets something something a bit different. So some of them have like five uh, modules with uh, with certain APIs. Maybe the next one has six, and so on. Um, that's uh, that's something we have recognized as a challenge and had to come with an answer to that. Uh, what we then did is to come up with a Kubernetes browser, which basically allows us to administrate application and manage APIs uh, to retrieve all the information via, via just one single interface. So what's happened there? Uh, we have this uh, centralized interface uh, where all the information of the all modules, all the APIs uh, running on the cluster are uh, collected and centralized. And uh, actually, we can um, we can uh, install this browser on the whole environment or on certain environments or like on, on certain applications if needed. Um, with uh, with the Kubernetes browser, uh, and, and that's by the way is something which uh, which really grew uh, from uh, from the feedback of our developers and our operation guys. Uh, so basically, they uh, uh, they told us what they want to have. They told us, okay, that's that's nice what you are showing, but actually that would be great to add certain features, or that would be great to set to, to uh, add certain views, and uh, that's how uh, our our browser basically became what it is today. Um, with uh, with the Kubernetes uh, browser, we have all this information uh, on the cluster available, like I said, and there is again no need to go and fetch the admin anymore or find someone who has admin rights. Um, as of now, uh, the tool allows uh, basically everybody in the company to uh, to accept this information. Of course, uh, you need maybe a bit of uh, context and know how to interpret, interpret it, but you will quickly get in. And uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, DevOps using it, obviously. We have developers using it. We have uh, project management using it, uh, just imagine. Uh, there's a customer saying, yeah, they would like to know um, uh, what, uh, what preconditions uh, there are to install a new module. And new preconditions would be, for example, that there's two other modules and three other APIs available. So how this project manager uh, does it now, basically, he or she just, just starts the browser, which is a matter of a few seconds, and checks on the environment of this customer. Uh, what is already installed. And uh, so it is very uh, easy and quickly to answer such question. Also for the product management, it is uh, now a great tool to find out if the, for example, definition of down is fulfilled. So in our definition of down, installing on the, uh, installing the application on the QA environment is a must. And uh, obviously the product manager can just go uh, to this browser, open it, and see what of uh, which of his products are already installed in there, uh, and that uh, gives a great overview if uh, if uh, the work is completed or not. Um, also, for uh, any kind of uh, boards, uh, like project boards, management boards, uh, where certain information is to be delivered, uh, this is a great tool to provide uh, overview and uh, transparency. Also, uh, support uses it uh, for, for the reasons that, uh, again, they have the whole overview, but also they can access the logs uh, and they can uh, share, share those logs with the partners, with the vendors, which, uh, again, uh, simplifies the collaboration. Um, so that's, uh, that's in, in, a, in a nutshell uh, what uh, the Kubernetes browser is uh, meant to be. And uh, I would really like to uh, show it to you quickly. Let me just uh, switch to another uh, view.
Just a second. All right, go into a sharing environment now. Here we go. So what you see is uh, the live installation, uh, live environment of our uh, QA environment for some product. And uh, you basically see here all the applications installed um, with a lot of information available. Again, uh, like I said, there is a version, so you can easily see what's the version of the, uh, of the module. Uh, you can see if it's a ready use or something happened during, to, during the testing. You can also see uh, a number of restarts. So we don't have a lot of restarts for now, uh, but um, but uh, you can basically even restart the application from, from this interface. That's not something you might uh, want. So you might want to use uh, such a tool only in read mode, for example, if, uh, if really the whole organization is using it. Uh, but for us, it's fine to, to allow for this restart uh, and other uh, right uh, capabilities. Uh, I can actually say that I uh, just checked on, on this view uh, maybe half an hour ago. It was all green. Now it, there are a lot of things going on. So that's really a live tool uh, where you can track uh, what's happening. Let's quickly go to one of the modules. Let's take the contract. Uh, here you have to find the information uh, about the installation in general. Uh, you would find, uh, would find the uh, instance uh, where it's running. Uh, also, with uh, helpful information for DevOps, uh, you would find the log files, uh, which uh, I just clicked, but this is in the next step. You'll probably not see it. But nevertheless, you can uh, download it and share with um, with your uh, partner, so whoever is needed, to, whoever needs to access it. Or you can open the console directly and see the information here. Um, now let's quickly go to the APIs. And for the API, so what basically happens, um, the, the tool uh, retrieves the information of all the APIs which are associated with this module. So like I said previously, that's uh, quite possible that the module has several APIs. In our case, it is uh, always the case for the user APIs and admin APIs at least. Uh, and here you can see we have contracts API, then products, uh, contracts admin, and uh, product admin, and certain person APIs. You can also see the basic information here. When you click on the uh, contracts uh, API, you would see also the uh, Swagger file, which is just, just loading. So, and this is the usual view you would get. Uh, with, uh, with the Swagger file, with uh, all the information you are used to have um, uh, with the responses uh, and so on. So we'll just quickly go on through. So it basically retrieves the file. What we are now looking at to add to the tool is also the possibility that you can actually uh, work with this uh, API definition on the fly and they could uh, potentially change something on the API uh, definition for the investigation purposes. Uh, this is also a great uh, feature to with the right access. Uh, so uh, something uh, your support team or our support team is obviously using to uh, find any uh, any problems or any um, um, faults with with the uh, APIs running. Good, uh, quickly going back. Also in terms of um, other uh, features that we have here, we have a logger, uh, which basically allows you to uh, change the log level on the fly without restarting the application. Uh, this is all very useful. And uh, you can even add uh, manuals for installation uh, or other information which is uh, related to the module itself or to the APIs. So quickly uh, going up again to the environment. Um, create a feature as a tool, track all events. So you would see in one place 
everything what has happened have it been uh, any warnings any any uh, down times and so on you can also see uh, in case there have been a lot of restarts like i showed before what was the root cause uh, of it uh, for example this it's running out of memory or similar all right now let me uh, quickly go back to my um, slides again Good. We are uh, constantly improving, uh, improving such uh, uh, or those uh, features or adding those features on the um, uh, on the Kubernetes browser. And uh, one uh, one thing we are also looking to add, which is uh, actually possible uh, because of the APIs, is to show uh, the dependencies of certain modules from from other modules. So obviously, if you want to update something uh, of certain module uh, or you are updating your APIs, uh, there is always a, an impact on those who are consuming it. And uh, sometimes it's also not that easy to know who is actually consuming it. Uh, you might, of course, have a sophisticated uh, API management platform when you are exposing the APIs uh, externally, then you have the whole track of um, of, of the apps uh, which, uh, uh, which consume the API. But uh, for us, uh, looking looking in the backstage, let's so let's say so, looking uh, to the backends, uh, that's uh, that's also information which is needed. So if one API or module receives an update, uh, which other modules are uh, concerned and and what needs to be taken into consideration? So for that, thanks to the APIs, we can also retrieve and associate this information of the Kubernetes browser. Uh, making it uh, visible uh, in uh, in form of a picture, which basically shows the module you're interested in, and then uh, also modules which are connected to those modules by the APIs. Uh, this is also the feature which is uh, which has been asked uh, for by the customers and the internal uh, developers as well. So uh, this is on track. Again, we are not selling this uh, this tool. Um, this is something uh, we uh, have developed, like I said, internally to, to help ourselves to um, deal with, uh, with all this overwhelming uh, information, all the modules, all the APIs installed. Uh, but I really hope that it motivates you also to, uh, to look into your installation and how you deal with it. Uh, for us, let me go uh, once again and show what the features are. So for us, uh, those are the scopes uh, which uh, which we already have uh, in place and uh, others are upcoming. So it's always uh, it always develops like our uh, microservices uh, story develops and, and Kubernetes uh, experience goes up. We also add in features there. Um, here you can also see we track uh, applications in general as uh, single application, the whole environments. We can generate the logs and download them. Uh, we can do the exports, uh, we track the information for the nodes, config maps. Uh, we can also play with settings uh, to um, reduce the root cause of certain problems. Um, also, uh, I have to say that initially it started as a really uh, small, let's say, DevOps initiative to, to help ourselves, but um, in, in the course of the time, uh, it turned out that the whole company is profiting for it, and uh, the customers are profiting from it as well. Uh, one of the one of the most important um, uh, advantages here is that we have uh, this access to information which we haven't had before. So even uh, even uh, if you don't think about the Kubernetes and microservices, it is not something which is um, given by default and, and everybody from from pre-sales from product to project manager down to developers and, and support teams can easily access and, and share this information uh, obviously this also has a positive effect on cost since uh, you're not engaging with half of your organization to find certain information you can also do a lot of uh, a lot of operation from this browser of course, it is not a rocket science, so you can always uh, go to other interfaces and perform certain actions there. But what's great is to have it all in one place. And uh, in terms of the uh, admin roles, which you as a like, single person might not have. So um, 
you might have admin rights for for certain uh, for certain tool, but you might have not them for another one. And with with this uh, solution which we have, you basically don't have admin rights at all. Uh, you just can uh, can enter uh, the URL and you have it. Good. Uh, like I said, the product management profits enormously from this, uh, and uh, the facilitation formation with uh, technology vendors is really simplified uh, by exchange information, by uh, working with the logs. Good. I think I'm um, at the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed our uh, internal story, how we deal with, uh, with uh, microservices and APIs, and what I can say here is that it's really beneficial for us not to separate the modules from the APIs view, but have it all in all together. And as a for our customers to have just one shop stop to, to retrieve the old information for the environment, for the modules and for the APIs. So we also reflect actually, thanks to this tool, what's happening with our APIs. Uh, we do uh, see obviously the information which is retrieved. Uh, we, do, we see the descriptions, we see uh what else is there and it may make us think of what might be needed and uh what uh our customers might benefit uh, from additionally so maybe we have to improve the descriptions maybe maybe we have to uh, add certain information maybe we have to exchange the links uh this this really helps and uh, those things are sometimes not catch directly uh, by the teams which are working on the sapis because they of course uh that's their daily work and that's what they're doing all the time uh, but sometimes it's really good when someone else uh, looks at it from a different perspective. And uh, this is what's happening now across the organization. I would be really wondering uh, if you have similar experiences or you want to know more. Uh, like I said, we're not selling it, but if you are interested to, to learn more, maybe to try it out, we could uh, look into it. Um, that's all from my side. That's certainly, that's certainly a very interesting way to go about it. So there were no tools at your disposal. You, disposal. you had to build your own. Well, you do have uh, other tools, obviously. You have like, uh, I don't know, uh, admin interfaces, on the Spring Boot and, uh, admin interfaces and so on. But the problem was that, again, you have several interfaces mm -hmm. and uh, you have to accept them. You have to know where to look. And uh, I mean, we've also been at the beginning of the whole Kubernetes story, right? So it was not uh, obvious for everybody uh, where to go and, and what to look for. Uh, so that's why uh, it was uh, really helpful to unify all of that in one place. And suddenly it turned out that not just DevOps are interested in such information, but that's the whole organization. Absolutely. And so you're saying you're not charging for it. You're welcoming people to get a more in-depth demo or test it out? Or are you thinking maybe open sourcing it? Or what's the next step? Uh, yeah, so basically, we do not charge it. We deliver this to our customers as part of the overall solution. And it's also very helpful for us. I mean, if our customers use it, so they can send us the logs. So again, the, the whole collaboration is simplified. Uh, that, that's a win-win. Um, we have been thinking about uh, open sourcing it, but uh, it was just uh, thinking again, because uh, we used basically internally. And uh, if, if someone is interested to look at, we are free to, to show or uh, to relate the possibilities. But again, the main purpose was to, to help ourselves. OK, great. And we have an audience question of how does changing the log level without restarting the application work? Does the application need to implement a certain log provider? Um, I would uh, need to uh, check with it with the team, if you don't mind. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm absolutely um, aware that that's actually a great, a great feature and it's uh, appreciated by the teams. But uh, I, in terms of uh, the data on the, on the implementation, I would need to check the data. If you don't mind, just uh, ping me so I have the address and I can uh, revert it. Okay, great. And you're free to answer it more publicly in the chat as well for stage sure. two. Thank you so much, Daria. And thank you everyone for joining this afternoon, morning.